From here we went to Omaha, come back for two weeks, and then we went to Leavenworth, Kansas, and there we got our clothes and everything. Then went to Camp Roberts, California, and that was a three-day trip to Camp Roberts, California on that day. <laughs> All of the, the freight trains had priority over these dumb GIs on a troop train. <laughs> After three months out there, we came back to, to Camp Gruber, Oklahoma. There we had, uh, oh, must have been 50 or 60 guys come in from various camps around the area that formed the nucleus of the 48th Engineers. We had 30 new graduates of Fort Valvor, Virginia, second lieutenants. Very, very good people. Most of them, if they stayed in after the war, they became colonels or better. <laughs> very, very good bunch of people. That in that era, they were they were tops. And then, then after we were engineer trained, we got in 600 people from Brook, Brooklyn and the Bronx. We had to give them their basic training. <laughs> that was that was a challenge, I'll grant you. <laughs> but we learned something too, I'm sure. One of them was a Holocaust survivor. An uncle in New York had got him out of Dachau in 1939. And why just he? I don't know, money I suppose. Anyway, when we got close to Dachau, he was just beside himself. And when we got there, the the Germans were all surrendering, and uh, the gate was locked. And we knocked the padlock off the gate, and he went right to the office. And there were no no Briners left. Ernest Briner was his name. There were no Briners left there. He cried unashamedly, and so did we. We had no knowledge of what was there. This, this Ernest Briner did, because he'd been confined there a little while. And, uh, but uh, there were a few people that, was, that were, had got in not too long before that were still active yet. They wanted our rifles, and they wanted to go get the Germans. But, uh, you know, the... People died, and they just threw them out of the, drug them out of the barracks, and uh, there were wagons setting out in front with corpses on them, you know. And they had a uh, incinerator there. And after after we were there, our battalion commander got some people from the town, and took them through there and showed them that. They all cried. They had no idea. They knew something was going on, but they didn't know what. Of course, the SS, they were ordered to, and they were loyal to Hitler. They, they went along with whatever he did. Well, if they didn't, why? They wound up in the same position that the, they were. We finally found out after, <laughs> when we got to Dachau, what, what this was all about. We finally realized what we had spent three and a half years in service for, that anybody could do that to anybody else that's that's about what it amounted to really yeah you know it justified <laughs> finally justified what we'd gone through yeah. we didn't call ourselves liberators at that time <laughs> we had patrols that went out to hitler's Berchtesgarten. garden i wasn't in on that and there was run patrols to the Swiss borders, run patrols down south to down in the Alps. But when we got to Dachau, that was really the end of any activity and any fighting. I don't recall there was anything after that. I was discharged in October 19th of 45. Yeah. We come back from, uh, we loaded at Marseille, France, and came home from through the Mediterranean. And uh, we were supposed to, 
<laughs> had a, a shift a shift on deck and a shift below deck sleeping. Well, we had rough seas and there was four or five days why we were a crowded bunch of people because <laughs> there were waves going across the, the deck. <laughs> and there were <laughs> quite a few seasick person people too. <laughs> I've lived a good life. I farmed for 50 years and uh, and I drove school bus for six or seven years. Nephew got me out at Great Dane trailers for four years. <laughs> and then I was invalided out, <laughs> prostate cancer, bone cancer. So I'm at the end of my rope too. Well, I would like to see respect for our fellow man. It's about all you can do.